So, very few times does an actual remake live up to or even surpass the original. And I think that, as weird as it is to say, I think this game blew the Dead Space original out of the water, hands down. There is very, very minute few things that I do not like about this game compared to the original. And so much more has been given into this game than the original had for us that is just so much better. And it's really hard where to start on everything, except for just kind of talking about what a remake is and then going through the story, the good about this game, the bad, and then my final review. So we're just going to kind of roll into that and just get right started. So what is a remake? A remake is just basically... A company realizing they can make profit off of nostalgia. And the idea is to make the game more accessible to a bunch more people and, you know, try to force a few more shekels and shills out of people. And I believe that's perfectly acceptable. I think that a few more awesome games should be remake that haven't been touched yet. Like, you know, Gears of War, please, for the love of God, Epic, get your head out of your ass, remake Gears of War. Everybody and anybody would love Gears of War 1 on PC. Please, just just for the love of God, just do it, please. But I digress. So let's talk about the, the story. So the story for the Dead Space remake is flawless. And after incorporating all of Dead Space 1, 2, and 3, just combining it, making it whole, and then reflushing it out so that way we learn more about what actually the storyline was of the original three games and concise it down to a point in Dead Space 1 so that way if they do remake 2 and hopefully fix all of 3, it would make for a really, really solid horror series that I think would even rival something as stupid as Five Nights at Freddy's that ascended into godhood. Basically, as coming on, you have Isaac Clark who looks like Shrek 2 from, you know... Shrek 2, uh, he looks like the human version. We got Daniels here, who, uh, top-notch character as always. We got Lance Riddick, uh, obviously not voiced by Lance Riddick, uh, it's honestly a shame, should have been. We also have Bangalore, and then we have Chen. And all of these characters, no matter how small and minute they are, have been solid in the difference of storytelling and how everything changed with the remake compared to the original. Daniels is more psychological warfare. Chen dies in the beginning, like always. Bangalore also dies in the beginning, and then we have Lance Riddick here, who uh, is really, really solid in trying to make you believe that everything that happened in the original is going to happen again in the remake, and it really just plays on your uh, expectations. And it's really, really solid. So, obviously, we know ship's been infected. There's the marker aboard. It's all pretty much the same story, to front and back. Just, they added more stuff about the unitology. How it all confers with Isaac. And how it all messes with Nicole herself. And that brings me up to my first little disappointment is... Maybe it's just me, and maybe I never realized how old Nicole and Isaac were, but Nicole to me, she uh, she looks a little older than I was remembering in the, in the first game, because I thought in the first game she was roughly anywhere in her late 20s to early 30s, but people are telling me she's like 45, almost 50 years old in this game, and that didn't make sense to me until I checked the wiki, and that's actually accurate. So that, that, that blew my mind a little bit. And then same with Isaac. Isaac looks, you know, early 30s. And, you know, he's pretty close to that, actually. Because, you know, I thought because of, uh, especially the way they told their story, they were, they were pretty close to each other in terms of age and um, everything else. So as always, you progress through the story. You learn about what is causing these necromorphs to happen, what happens when people get attacked by the necromorphs, they get transformed. You know, you fight a few bosses, you learn about the different mutations of necromorphs, you know, there's the babies, there's the 
weird dog versions. There's the ones with armor. There's the ones with stasis bodysuits that are military. You got the brutes. It, it's all exactly the same, but it's all so minutely different. And some of the key different points that I'd like to talk about and how they've made the game significantly better was the asteroid sections or just the outside airship gun sections in general. You had the... I want to say it was either Chapter 3 or Chapter 4 asteroids. And they changed it so that you just have to shoot five asteroids per gun and then it, you're done with the section. It made it so much simpler, so much easier, and so much more enjoyable than anything else uh, from the original could have done. And then the same with fighting the Leviathan when it gets stuck on the comms array. It's the exact same. It is just beautifully done and so much more enjoyable than the original version with just sitting there and then shooting at it with a gun. So much more enjoyable. And then, of course, we have the final bit um, with the hive mind. If you play on a new game plus, like I am now, but you probably won't see much of it, they've introduced the phantoms and they've introduced an alternate ending, which explains the lead up to Dead Space 2, where Isaac, you know, spoiler alert, makes a marker on Earth and basically causes a next arm again. And at least I think it's Earth. I can't remember uh, where at he is. It might just be on a different planet that is akin to Earth, but it's not Earth itself. Because I think uh, the third game actually takes place on Earth when uh, Danik, the fuckhead, uh, leader of Unitology, actually causes convergence on Earth before we decide to fuck off. Now, let's talk about the good. So, the good of this game is obviously the graphics. A lot of it's been upgraded, a lot of it looks super crisp, a lot of it looks super clean... And a lot of the animation has been redone, recaptured, remotioned, and it all looks really, really, really fucking good. There is no doubt that if it just looked even a smidge better, it could be on par with Callisto Protocol in terms of graphics, but be 10,000 years ahead of it in every other aspect of uh, lore and storytelling and just the way everything plays out we also just have the character interactions and just how everything is motioned and just even like the minor bits of gun control and how everything plays out with the little rig noise sound effects and everything else it just it's so good it's so solid so let's talk more about uh just how they've redesigned the map so, in the original, it was more linear. You kind of had a path, you went on the path, and that, that was that. In the remake, they've made it a little bit more open. They've made it feel like an actual ship that you can explore. They made it feel like you're actually an engineer doing something. You're not here, just kind of sent here because, oh, I had to repair a ship, but now all of a sudden I'm a goddamn surgical engineer on how to dismember necromorphs. And it feels good. Because I actually feel like I'm repairing stuff and not just murdering necromorphs. And that there's actual different access points and routes and everything else that I'm going to need while basically being aboard here. And that allows us, like, a few different things. So there's the security passes. You get one, two, and three. And then eventually there's a master override. And the master override allows you to get some really nice bonus weapon upgrades, which... I thought was a neat way of getting access to them rather than just buying all of them in the shop like you used to with schematics. Uh, it feels nice that there's just different little weapon bits spread out across the map, allowing us to just kind of traverse and go back and forth. And then it also allows them to kind of use uh, the feeling of, oh, if I were to go back through this in the original, there wouldn't be enemies. I could just do whatever I wanted. But instead offers up the ability to throw more enemies at you have them just laying on the ground thinking oh yeah i killed that one already and then it comes back to life or it just spouts out of a out of a hole out of nowhere and it really just kind of jumps you especially in new game plus when there's phantoms now which are just basically stronger necromorphs that are the more akin black necromorphs that we remember the stronger variants and it really just 
fucks with you at points because you think, oh, you know, I've gone through here, nothing really has changed yet, and then all of a sudden, like, three different necromorphs come and attack you, and it's really different. And then the last thing I want to talk about is, uh, for the good stuff of the story, is just the two different endings. So, you have the canonical first ending, where Isaac gets jump-scared by Nicole, she just kind of freaks out, and then cuts to black, and it goes to the credits. Cool. But, they've also decided to elaborate on it, and further incorporate it, when we proceed through with Dead Space 2, and they have these little markers, and because the ship's run by the Unitologists, we get to see all these little markers, and we can pick them up, and then if we do a little marker, like, tribunal, we can actually get this secret ending, and then it shows that Mark, uh... The markers have made Isaac completely crazy, and he's written and scrawled all the, the chaotic bullshit that you can see across the map, and it's been all confined inside of his spaceship, and then he's just sitting there talking with Nicole, and she's just like, I'm so glad you decided to make us whole, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna build the marker for you, and then, you know, decide to fuck it up like that, which, I know not really a big surprise to anybody but it just felt so genuinely more impressive and good that everything kind of has its own place now of right this explains the lead up to dark or uh, dead space 2 i wanted to say dark souls 2 sorry i'm in the middle of a dark souls campaign uh doing all of them on my youtube so if you know you're also interested in that check it out because in the in the original Dead Space 2, you're kind of just locked up because they, they think you're crazy, you know, probably because you tried to kill, like, they quote-unquote said you killed everybody aboard the Ishimura and your crew and whatnot. And it never made sense to me, like, how Isaac got labeled as crazy like that and then just kind of got thrown in and then somehow built a marker in the same time and he doesn't recall any of it. It just kind of didn't make sense to me, so I'm glad they're kind of retconning that and fixing it up a little bit to actually make him seem like he was actually crazy and that he did build this marker of his own volition and not because unitology professors and uh, people actually wanted him to. So let's talk about the bat. And there's very, very little bad things in here. And most of these are just uh, personal gripes or they're more um, gameplay issues that I'm sure will be flushed out eventually. The first one I want to talk about is the little tentacle guys on the wall. There's an issue with them that if you don't shoot their tentacles in a certain way, they retract inside the body. You can't shoot them. And they make you think they're dead, but then you walk close to them to try and grab an item and then it whips your thing off and kills you. I've lost an impossible run to that bug and that kind of, you know, pissed me off. Um, another little issue that I have is mostly just with the two character deaths that we you know, have. We have Johnston's and uh, Daniel's uh, deaths. Daniel's gets smushed and fucked up in the, in the original and she just gets whipped around until she's nothing but body parts in the original. And in here she kind of just gets a light slap on the body and then just kind of tossed to the side. And I didn't hear her death noise go off, so I'm assuming she's still alive, but probably not for long, and I doubt she survives any other way. But if I see her in Dead Space 2 or 3, I'm gonna fucking be pissed, alright? I wanted that bitch to be dismembered like she was, or even more gruesomely so, or even more com more comically so. Like, uh, it could have slapped the tentacle down on her, and then, like, it got stuck to it, and then, like, the tentacle just kind of wiped it off on the railing. Something like that would have been a lot better. And then, same for Johnston's death. I was kind of a little disappointed that his death was the, uh... Just pushing into the Singularity Core instead of, I don't know, just, uh... Getting murdered the way he did in the original. I thought he, the way he got murdered in the original was so much better. And so much more, uh... Provoking than just, uh... He's gonna sacrifice himself for our sake kind of thing. I didn't, I didn't much care for that. And... The last thing that I have, um, even just a, a little bit of uh, frustration and complaint about, is uh, is the enemy placement. Some of the enemy placement 
uh, can be incredibly difficult or rough for no good reason. And I hate that they made that so wonky uh, towards the end of the game. Uh, especially when you're escorting the marker around. Sometimes, like, there's like 15, 20 necromorphs just all coming at you from different angles. And it's not that that's, like, such a bad thing, right? It's just that it's more or less really hectic and almost... I don't want to say impossible, but it's really, really hard to do on impossible mode, which is, you know, the, the way I beat it and how I have this suit. And I can't tell you how many times I've almost lost a run there, uh, just trying to get through since the, since the game's been released. So, in my personal opinion, I think the Dead Space remake, if you've never played Dead Space and you want to get into it, I think tossing out the $60 is the way to go. I don't think that you should try and save money by playing the original because while the original is good and will always hold a special place in my heart, there's no way in my right mind would I ever recommend anybody to play the original over the remake. When they've nailed down so many of the key features and fixed so many of the issues that have made the game so much worse. Like the asteroids and whatnot. And besides the few minor grapes that I have, including like a few FPS drops here and there, this game is fucking flawlessly good. And it's hard to say that about any game that's come out in the recent years that haven't been remakes, honestly. Like, uh, except for, you know, the Resident Evil 3 remake, but, you know, nobody, nobody wants to acknowledge that piece of shit ever existed. So, I would have to give this game a solid 9.3. And, again, most of those issues can be fixed with just some tweaks, and I'd bump it up to a 9.5. But, I, I personally just don't like the way Daniels and, uh, Johnston died in the remake, and, uh... Puts it at a little bit of a lower tier for me than I would for just a rehashing of their death in a more gruesome or comedical manner. But what do you guys think? Drop your uh, opinions down below and tell me what you liked or disliked about this game. And I will respond to them. I love hearing from you guys and you guys telling me what you thought was good and what was not. You guys take care, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys in the next one.